Hey guys, it's Mr. Here again for another video today, and we are back with our Houston Bull uh, franchise mode. And in this franchise mode, we strictly draft players from the CHL. Uh, Alright, so uh, hello guys, welcome back. And uh, I'm pretty excited to get into this episode. We're going to be doing our first season, uh, because this season really is not going to matter too much to us it's basically just a write-off uh, i'll show you the teams really quickly we do not have anybody that we drafted in the last episode on the team because uh, they are important but i want them to grow and since they're all playing in the chl we don't really need them to play right now so this is what the offense looks like uh, this is what the defense looks like in the nhl obviously it's a team that could put up some wins uh, but they're not going to bring us to the playoffs or anything. I made sure our worst goalies were, or our better goalies were actually in the NH or in the AHL, uh, just so we didn't really have to worry about that. So there's the AHL lineups as well. Now, everybody we signed in the last episode, um, or sorry, everybody that we drafted in the last episode is um, not playing for us, and we don't have them signed yet. Because I do want to wait, if not a year, maybe two years before we sign them. But I also don't want to have a bunch of players on an ELC when, you know, say we're actually going to need good players on an ELC. So let's, uh, I do want to show you uh, who they are, though. Uh, not a lot of great potential guys out there, unfortunately. But, uh, or not a lot of great potential players that we drafted, I should say. So everybody that is unsigned on the team right now is players we drafted this past season so uh liam howell our best pick of the draft which is a medium top nine 66 overall which really is not a great pick uh, i have seen him make the a or make the nhl and the ahl before in past franchise uh, sims so hopefully he will for us uh as well as riley webb uh, 64 medium seventh d uh, age of 20 not too bad i guess uh, Cole Frazier, also an overager at 20 years old, 63 overall, medium 7th again. Uh, David Levin, AHL top 6, uh, 20, 62 overall. Victor Hadfield, um, arguably our prize uh, draft pick. You know, he's a medium top 6 defenseman, which isn't sick, but he is 18, and he we, we drafted him 10th overall. So hopefully he isn't too bad. Uh, I don't think he'll be too bad for us. Hopefully we can uh, breed him into the NHL uh, in years to come. Samuel Benton, again, another pr relatively decent prospect. Um, I don't know if he'll do much with us for the fact that he is an AHL top six forward, unfortunately, but what can you do? Uh, and then that is it. But, or that is it for the skaters. We aren't done there. Let's go look at the goaltender. We also drafted Kari Piron or Piron Piranin, Piranin. We're gonna go with Piranin. Uh, he played really well in the one game he played, uh, which was for Windsor last year. Um, he's a 60 overall, medium fringe, 18 year old goalie, which really again isn't that bad of a pick so far for the goaltending. So you got to look at the team. You got to look at the prospects we've drafted so far. Now let's go. I gotta show you something. It's hilarious. I did this off screen after, at the end of the last episode. Every single one of our scouts is in the OHL. Obviously, that's the only league we're drafting from, so we don't need to see where other people are coming from. All we need to know is where CHL players are coming from, which, again, you know, that is the goal of this series. So hopefully with all these scouts, uh, we've got 15. I could hire 20 scouts, but we, I don't think we need to right now. So with the 15 scouts we have, I think that'll be enough to basically know everybody's potential uh, in the OHL, which I really hope so. Um, now before we do this as well, let's look at the draft class to see uh, the players in the OHL that we should be able to draft. So Quinton Byfield will arguably be number one. It's unfortunate we couldn't get all three of these top three players. Uh, because that would really help our team out. That would really uh, advance our team into the future. Quinton Byfield, obviously, he grows pretty well from what I've seen. Cole Perfetti as well, I've seen him grow pretty high. Uh, they're both medium elite. I believe Byfield's a 73 or a 74, and I'm almost 100% positive Perfetti is a 72. As for Marco Rossi, I think he's a 65 or so overall, but he is a... Um, uh, medium top six, which again would be our best prospect. 
Uh, like I said, there's a lot of prospects we can take this year. This is a pretty good draft for the OHL. We've got about, um, let's see, we've got about uh, seven or seven to eight players in the first round alone. Um, now, I don't, obviously, we can't really, in a draft of glory, you can't really make trades. So I don't think I'll be able to make any, or I don't think I'm going to really go for any trades um, to try and move up in the draft or anything. You know, maybe we can try it. I'm not too sure. I just, out of curiosity, how many, what are the draft picks looking like? All right, yes. I don't remember how I got Anaheim's pick. I really don't. But we have uh, our, we have two firsts this year, which is really helpful. A second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh. So who knows? Anaheim may not make the playoffs, and we could have two lottery picks. Uh, the list has a contender, so that's pretty unlikely. But if that is the case, then we might be able to land Quinton Byfield and Cole Perfetti now. Um, you know, that's uh, that's that's all we're going to do for this uh, or end this episode, really. We're just going to sim. Uh, we'll sim up to the deadline for now. Uh, again, you can't make any trades in a draft to glory. At least that's one of the rules I have. I'm not going to be making any trades. Um... But uh, if you guys want to in yours, or if you guys think we should, uh, let me know, obviously. Uh, but I personally normally do not. So, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, what can you do? Go to a science scout? No, I think I'm good. I know where all my scouts are right now. <laughs> I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> so, uh, let's. Uh, we're just going to sim through those guys. It's going to take a while, uh, but we'll get there soon enough. Um, hopefully, <clears throat> hopefully it won't take too long. Also, this is my uh, second video back-to-back -back recording, and I really, really need to take a drink of water. I forgot to at the end of the Be a Pro episode, so I'm going to right now, since we're in this break. Anyways, we also have three wins in the first ten games, which is really, really surprising. If if we're going to be get it, if we're close to 20 wins, I may make our team worse. I might switch our AHL and NHL teams, really because I do not want our team to be even close to 500, uh, like anywhere near 500. I don't want us to get over 20 wins throughout a season because I want to basically guarantee that we have the number one odds to win the lottery pick just in case, although this year it doesn't look like we need it. But still, you know, looking to try and try and make those, uh, you know, those moves to to stay at the bottom of the league well i will do it if i have to now i now i'll be right back i need to get to take i need to take a drink of water all right there we go <laughs> that's much better oh man that one uh, that one really hurt i'm not gonna lie frig me my throat was not feeling good all right, guys, so, uh, again, we're doing way, way better than I would have ever thought. We're getting way too many points right now. Like, I'm really, I'm, I think I might stop the sim here soon. We're gonna, we're like, we keep getting points, which is ridiculous. Like, I don't know how we keep getting points, uh, to be 100% honest with you. Because, like I said, this team isn't great. Obviously, yeah, sure, we can win games. But this team is not good enough to be 16, 24, and 4. I'm making changes to the lines or to our team. We are bottom of our division, but I don't... Yeah, I, we are probably tied for bottom of the league. Well, we are tied for bottom of the league right now with the Knights. But, wow, Ben Street playing way too good. <laughs> what the hell? He's got 31 points. Wow. Um... Okay, let's uh, let's make some roster moves because our team is playing way, way, way too good. Uh, I do not want them to be this good. So let's uh, look at defensemen first. I'd say. So that's our top six uh, in the NHL. So let's grab Latikainen, uh, Kankan, Kankan Para, sure. Uh, all right, so let's grab them. We'll send down our top three defensemen. Like I said, guys, we uh, Trevor Daly went to Arizona. Whatever, I don't care. Um, we were gonna send those three down as well, and we will call. Uh, actually, yeah, we'll just bring. Uh, no, we'll just keep. Um, 
Brandon Davidson up in the NHL, sure. He can be our number one defenseman. <laughs> uh, as for forwards, uh, clearly we've got too many good forwards up in the NHL right now, so let's uh, bring some worse players up. All right. Uh, Street and Weiss both went to Minnesota again. I don't care. Oh, no, that's the AHL. Sorry, don't want to bring them up. We'll bring these guys up, though. The game is going to sign some players because of the waivers. Um, if people can stop claiming, please. Like, seriously, I need you to not. Um, but whatever, it's fine. We'll be, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. All right. Again, stop. Stop. <laughs> God. All right, whatever. So that's going to be our team now. Uh, it's obviously much worse. We didn't send everybody down, but uh, there we go. It's a much worse uh, team, I would say. <laughs> As for the goaltending, how are they even doing? Grossnick's... Grossnick is literally playing better than I've ever seen any of the actual NHL elite goaltenders play this year. Grosnick has a 922 save percentage. I haven't seen Vasilevsky, Holtby, Bobrovsky, or Price, or Gibson, any of those five goalies. I have not seen over a 920 save percentage. What the hell? Why? <laughs> like, why is this happening? <laughs> we do not need that at all. Jesus Christ. Why is that happening? Oh, man, bro. Oh, bro. Bro. <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> why? I don't care if our AHL team is doing good. Like, I sure, the AHL team, they can do good. But the NHL team, no, 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 definitely not. All right, we shouldn't be as good anymore. Let's sim to the deadline again, or like, as, I, as I was doing before. We better uh, stop winning games, though, because, you know, obviously this team would win a game here and there, but I, that, that's fine, but I... 16 and 24 like that's way too good of a record i need to make sure that we're bottom of the league like i said you know like there, this obviously any team for sure can win a game so i'm not too worried about that but we really we really need to lose a lot of games because this team is currently doing way too good for my liking as for the ahl team though we are doing pretty good down in the ahl kyle palmieri got traded twice in this episode already got traded to ottawa and then got traded to arizona I believe is what that just said. So, sure, Vancouver gets two first for a little... Two Ottawa first for Tanner Pearson and then Elias Patterson. Wow. Wow, that's a big trade. Oh, my God. Elias Patterson's already had enough of Vancouver. Poor guy. <laughs> wow, that's a big trade. That's crazy. Uh, looks like we might be in a trade offer. No? Okay. Good. I don't know why anybody would want to trade... Uh, for any of our players, although I guess Howell, uh, or Howell, he's a relatively decent prospect with a bit of value, so I guess that makes sense. On a two-game win streak, whoa, calm down, boys. We've got 20 wins right now. Uh, again, kind of too many wins. David Savard and Riley Nash to Colorado. Again, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, i got to take another drink. All right, there we go. 44 points. By far the worst team in the league. That's much, much better. As for the AHL, they are second in the league. Yanni Tup Tupurainen is pretty damn good, which I had no idea, but good for him, I guess. All right, we uh, we should be good to sim to the end of the season now. We shouldn't. Well, we 100% win with the playoffs. We 100% uh, should be the worst team in the league, which is obviously the goal. If you guys couldn't tell, uh, uh, well, not by this series. I wasn't going to say this. that's the goal of the series. It's most definitely not the goal of the series. But right now, the goal is, like, these first couple of seasons, we need to finish bottom of the league, especially, you know, if we aren't bottom, you know, if we aren't literally bottom of the barrel every year for the next three or four seasons, that's okay. If we're still bottom three, that's that's okay. Um we need to be especially this draft we need all the luck we possibly can to make sure we get to draft number one because although i guess if we're worse than the league the low the highest we can or the lowest we can drop is four and byfield and perfetti should still be there um 
anyways. So, wow, we had 50 points this season. Uh, wow, actually, the Blue Jackets had 68. They played surprisingly awful. Like, that is really, really bad. As for the NHL, uh, let's go and take a look at some stats real quick. Uh, Nathan Gerby led our team in points with 46. Martin Erat with 24 points. That's the second uh, point leader. He had one goal. <laughs> uh, Nathan Gerby almost had 20 goals. Damn, 32 years old, rejuvenizing his career. So the goaltenders, Grosnick and Layton, did surprisingly well. Um, let's go to uh, let's go look at the entire league now, because that's the real reason why I wanted to come over here. Let's see. Uh, Crosby led the led the way. Uh, Five hundred point men this year: Malkin, Drysdale, Barkov, McKinnon, and Crosby. Uh, leading goal scorer is Jack Eichel with forty five. Most assists for a forward is Gabe Landeskog with sixty six. Best plus minus is McKinnon with a fifty four. That top line uh, in Colorado played unreal. Worst plus minus is going to be someone on our team: Brennan Davidson, minus forty four. Most penalty minutes in the league. Uh, goes to Tom Wilson. Uh, let's go check the defenseman. Just out of curiosity, Ekman Larson led the way with 80 points uh, in 82 games. Not too bad. He uh, might take a Norris home. Um, as for the goalies, let's see. Uh, 42 win season for Philip Grubauer. And Carter Hart looks like he is going to win the Vezina. Like That's what I mean, guys. 920 save percentage, 2.39 GAA. That's some of the best stats I've seen this year so far. I don't get it. Uh, rookie skaters Jack Hughes led the way with 61. Colin White, 45. And Cabo Cago, 43. Colin White and Cabo Cago seem to be the only rookies that surpassed 20 goals. They were. They each had 23. Very, very interesting. So that's all I really wanted to check there. Obviously, we uh, were worse than the league and uh, Columbus, which was right behind us. Now, I think our AHL team is going to make the playoffs which we'll briefly kind of watch, I guess. Oh, we are in the playoffs right now, okay. Uh, we're just going to sim the first round. We'll see how it goes. Game one, we win. Game two, we lose. Game three, we win. Game four, we lose. We're going to a game five, which we win. We're playing the Utica Comet, uh, or the Comets, in the second round. We'll sim the whole series again. We win game one. We lose game two. We win game three. We lose game four. We win game five. We win game six. And we are now playing the Lehigh Valley Phantom, who are 7-1 and one in this postseason. Uh, but it is the uh, conference finals. We lose game one, win game two, lose game three, win game four. Game five, we win. Game six, we lose. Game seven, we lose. Oh, it was a close series. But uh, Lehigh Valley will be on to the finals in the AHL. We will sim to the draft now. I'm not going to worry about the draft interviews because it really doesn't do much. It, I don't think it actually affects the players in any way. Lehigh Valley goes on to win the uh, the uh, Calder Trophy. But again, like I don't think it really matters. Houston picks second, all right? So not bad. Me and Columbus just swapped. Wow, Tampa. Tampa. Vancouver is pissed. They finally get out of, like, they get above the top five, <laughs> and they don't have the pick. Although they do have San Jose's and Ottawa's pick, which is 10 and 11. But still, they could have had 3rd, 10th, and 11th, or 11th and 12th, sorry. Unfortunate for them. Uh, but it's okay. We get the number two pick. Cole Perfetti and Quinton Byfield should both be there, obviously. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'd hope so, at least. Uh, you know, going to second overall, I'm, I'll have one of them no matter what. So <laughs> that's what matters. Marion or Marion Hosa retires. Uh, Patrick Marley retires as a pred. Zetterberg retires. Gabbert gone. Chara gone as a devil. Interesting. Uh, Martin Erat just retired from our, for us. You see Jokinen, Derek Roy, or uh, Michael Layton, gone. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you, buddy. I wouldn't want to play with our team either. Uh, Austin Husky, or Huskies have retired. Or our uh, coach, Rene Aubin, has retired. I wonder how old he was. Uh, Yarko Emanen and Arto Letikainen uh, are now scouts that we can sign. Sure, cool. I guess we'll do that now. Um, actually, how good are they in the uh, OHL? Uh, Yarko is not good. 
so I'm not going to offer him a contract. Uh, as for uh, Emanin, I uh, know that was the one I just looked at. Alto, Latikainen, Lack, Jesus. I actually will sign him because he's relatively decent in the OHL. All right, not too bad, guys. Again, I'm not going to do the draft interviews. I'm not worried about it. I really don't think it affects the players or us in any way, really. I, I think it would be something you'd get sick of relatively fast as well. Um, so here we go, guys. We're going to do the draft uh, in this episode. We're basically going to do everything we can this episode. So let's look at the draft class. And let's see. All right, so Quinton Byfield, for sure, a medium elite, projected sixth overall. Uh, Cole Perfetti, projected seventh overall. Tempted to move down. Oh, that's how we got picks, wasn't it? We moved down on the draft. That's how we did it. That's basically the only trades we can do. Now, I kind of want to move to fifth, but I feel like that's kind of risky. I feel like it's too risky to move down to fifth. So, you know what? We're going to move down to fourth. <laughs> Uh, Arizona does want to get rid of their pick. They can move up. They can take our um, second overall pick. But I want another draft pick as well. I'm going to take their first next year. Mm, that should go through. I should be able to get more. So let's take their third this year as well. Is that enough? Will that still go through? No, it won't really. Okay, what about a fourth? And we'll just. Tr I'm just trying to get extra picks. Uh, no, really, well, am I, can I not get the two first? Okay, no, I can. All right, let's pray that something happens and Quinton Byfield doesn't go first or second or third. Uh, Holtz goes second. Um, and McKinnon goes third. Uh, view draft class. Do I want to move down, guys? I feel like I should be able to move down to fifth. Uh, I'm going to try it. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to risk it. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not risking it. <laughs> no, I can't do it. We're just going to we're gonna take our pick uh, fourth overall. We are going to take Quentin Byfield of the Sudbury Wolves. Uh, how did he do? He is a very good prospect. Uh, awesome. He's a very big man, too. I did not realize how good or how big of a man he was. 77 points throughout his 66 games last season. Not too bad. We're going to pick Quinton Byfield here. There we go. 74 overall, medium elite. Oof. Oh, man, that's that's rough. Boston wants to give up their pick, which I kind of want to trade for to get Cole Perfetti as well. But, mm, but I don't think he would drop to ninth to Winnipeg's pick. So, like... What do I do? <laughs> like, the likelihood of him dropping to ninth is extremely unlikely. Hagelin goes five. Raymond goes six. Perfetti goes seventh. Uh, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Michael Rossi not a medium top six? I thought he was a medium top six. Hmm. Maybe, you know what? I'm going to see if I can make this trade with Boston to try and get the fifth overall selection. Look at that. Quinton Byfield, 74 overall, 17 years old. Not bad, not bad. Let's look at his stats. Uh, he's a pretty good all-around player. He, he is listed as a power forward. He, may, he could be a two-way forward as well if you really wanted him to. Uh, but again, a pretty decent pick he was. <sighs> yeah, well, that ain't happening. I don't know how I'd even begin to try and make that trade go through. I could give up our first and our second. That's still not enough. And I also don't necessarily want to give up our second either. What if we give up Arizona's... the Our, our first at the end of this round. Actually, that might go through. Is that worth it to get Cole Perfetti? I think so. I think it's worth it, guys. Trade rejected. Please tell me this will go through. Oh, we're close to fair value. All right. Uh, let's try our seventh this round or this draft then. Will that go through? No, it won't. Okay. We're gonna have to try and do something a little bit more. I'm gonna try uh, our fifth in next season's draft. 
Nope. Okay, I really don't want to have to give up a third, but if I have to, I will. How about a fourth? There we go. All right, guys. So, I don't know how we manage that, but we get back-to-back -back picks. We're picking two OHL studs, now Cole Perfetti of the Saginaw Spirit. Uh, pretty, pretty hyped about that as well. He, again, another good player. Uh, two very different, two drastically different players, if you think about it. One's 6'5", one's 5'11". You know, we've got Byfield, a big power forward, uh, six foot five, and then we've got Perfetti, five eleven playmaker. Um, he's got pretty good stats, honestly. Quick glance at his stats, I'm he might even be better as a two way forward. But either way, we have our like we have two of our franchise players for this entire series to come, which I'm very very pleased about. Now let's take a look at the draft class again to see for players um, that are here for us. Now, really, we don't have everybody scouted perfectly. Why? How? Uh, <laughs> um, all right. Well, we didn't give up our second, so I think uh, I think we're just gonna skip to our pick in the second round. Because obviously we just got those two picks, and those were really good picks for us. Now I do want to go see Marco Rossi to see, because I thought, no, he is a medium top six. That's what I thought, yeah. I mean, honestly, I probably could have traded up to get Marco Rossi as well. 68 overall, not a bad player. Uh, you know, out of the draft, medium top six, 60, uh, 68 overall, it's pretty good. Maybe I should have tried to get over him, but it was a little spectacle or I was a little uh, speculant seeing that he was um, that he was no longer uh, a medium top six, but I guess he is. So, you know, that was uh, that was a little worrisome. I'm not gonna lie, um, but uh, maybe uh, maybe we're good. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about it too much. No, it's fine. It's fine. We're fine. We're, you know, obviously we can't do anything about it now. Him and Strangers could have been picks that we could have used, I guess, realistically. Uh, but it's okay. We're going to make our pick now. Let's see uh, who we can be going for. Let's obviously switch it to the OHL. Brandon Coe does not look like a great prospect. Jacob Perot as well. Willie Cole. Oof. That's a that's a name. I want to say Coil, but I really don't know. Marcus Gretz, Igor Shabrikov, Cameron Butler, Nicholas Wong. I'm honestly just looking to see if there's anybody that does not have a snapshot. Dylan Robinson. I don't know if he's real or not, though. It doesn't look like there's going to be anybody apart from the players that were projected in the first round to go or to help us out here. We will probably try and get Layton Moore and Evan Veerling. Now, I'm assuming they're going to not be good. I'm sure it'll be like a medium seventh and a medium top nine. But uh, what can you do, really? All right, so I guess I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for Gratz because I truly have no idea how to pronounce this guy's name. Will Ky Kylie? Kylie. Kyle? Kylie? I, I have no idea. I really don't. We're going to go for Marcus Gratz. He is a high 7th. All right, you know, that's not as bad as I was expecting. Co was actually better than I thought as well at, in a medium top 9. Um, so that's not too bad either. All right. Well, I'm pretty happy about that. I do, just out of curiosity, I do want to see uh, Kyle. I don't know if that's. I really don't. I have no idea how you guys or how that how his name is pronounced. If you guys can tell me, please let me know. Wow, that's a good pick. Second round, uh, Lagwand goes uh, to Vegas, 68 overall, medium top six. Um, where is he? Uh, he hasn't been drafted yet. Uh, let's see. He should be going any time, any minute now. He was. Wait, was he? Wait, was he projected high? Uh, oh yeah, he's projected to go here soon. I thought he was supposed to go like right after, uh, uh, right after our pick though. So let's see, where is he at? Kyle, medium top nine. Yeah, I guess he's okay. We'll sim to our next pick, which I believe to be in the third. Yep. 
Alright, now, let's see, there was that goalie, or not the goalie, I don't know, he wasn't a goalie, but the elite player. Um, uh, well, we might be able to get him in the fourth. Mm, Layton Moore, we might be able to get in the fourth. Do we have, we do have, or, no we don't, that's right, we just gave up our fourth. So, I don't know what to do. You know, I think uh, I think we're just gonna try and play it safe. We're not gonna go for any of the players that we see up at the top here. We're gonna go for uh, where is he? Leighton Moore. We'll see if he's any good. I can't imagine him actually being an elite prospect. Uh, medium top six defenseman, not great, not bad. Uh, but he's also a an Oshawa General, which is where I live and where I go to school. So not you know I'm okay with that. Um, all right, let's go and look at the OHL again. I didn't mean to go to the W. All right, um, this guy is for, for sure a top six. Michael Bianconi? Bianconi? Sure. Bianconi is a medium top six for sure. We're just going to take it. It's a safe pick. Medium top six, 52 overall, not too bad. Now to the sixth round. All right, let's see. Is there anybody out here that really wants to be a good pick for us? Um, another defenseman, but I kind of want to take a forward. Uh, Veerling. There's Veerling. All right. Well, I guess we're, we're just going to take him now. Might as well have him Veerling. Low top nine, not a great pick. You know, medium top nine I would definitely would have been more okay with, but unfortunately, what can you do? All right, let's just sort it by potential, see if there's any guaranteed out here doesn't look like it okay well well uh, <laughs> man our scouts did surprisingly awful <laughs> I'm not gonna lie we didn't get a goalie this draft either maybe we just take a flyer on a goalie because like I said we just straight out oh wow uh, Gusta looks awful and Taylor also looks awful uh, <laughs> You know, we're going to take Ethan Taylor just because that is my name. My name is Ethan. He is a medium AHL starter. You know, we just needed to get a goalie in here because, you know, any goalie might help out in the future. But it's okay because Quinton Byfield and Cole Perfetti are part of the team now. Obviously going to be our franchise probably maybe one and two center, maybe just two-thirds of our top line forever <laughs> for years and years to come. I'm very, very happy about that. Now, I don't think I'm going to sign any of them. Uh, yes, let's go to a sign scout. i got to take another drink of water real quick, guys. Uh, but I do want to look at something here. All right, so Pisani's actually good in the OHL. I think off-screen, I'm going to just try and get a bunch of A, A-plus uh, AHL players. Eminen, I'm just not going to sign. Or I said players, I meant scouts. So like anybody who has A, A plus, maybe even A minus, I'm gonna try and get them on the team. So uh, Pisani and um, Gove, I'm gonna bring back. But I'm gonna look through like we just sort of by region efficiency right right now. I don't think all these guys have A plus. So A plus, B minus. Like I'm gonna get rid of him. Um, Let's see. Wow, wow, we do have a lot of A pluses. A, A. Wow, that's it. We actually only have two A's. <sighs> that's surprising. Lots of content. I know I just signed, but you know what? I'm going to fire him. <laughs> I, I don't think I need him. I'm going to maybe, you know, I'm still going to go out and look for some better scouts for the, uh, for the uh, OHL to see if we can get some more A pluses in there. Because if we can, then obviously that will help. We have 72 and a half million cap space. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right, guys. I think I'm going to end the episode here. I don't think I'm going to sign any of the prospects we have right now. Because, again, I would kind of want to keep them. Since they can play in the OHL, I kind of want to keep them there for now. Because Byfield and Perfetti, they can play one more year in the AHL. Or they can play one more year in the O, and then I can sign them both next year. As for, you know, everybody that we drafted last year, I will definitely sign all of them 
next season as well, especially cause, especially since they're all, are, are expiring. Maybe not all of them, but definitely some of them. Like for sure, Howell, Webb, Frazier, and Levin probably. Probably Hadfield as well, of course. He was our first ever draft pick. Got to keep him. But, uh, you know, that'll all be in the next episode, guys. So I will be uh, – I'll be – Finishing the resign phase, uh, free agency as well. Obviously, um, I'm gonna do all of that uh, off screen for you guys, just so I don't bore you with it, because you guys really probably don't care about me just getting up to the minimum salary cap. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, we don't have to resign any of these players. It doesn't matter who we sign. So let's just sim to free agency. Just to see what free agents are out there right now. Uh, you know, just out of curiosity, those two did accept, which is nice to see. Um, all right, not too bad. Uh, Emanen, no, I'm not going to sign you. Sorry, buddy. It's out of the trade block. Let's just take anything that is on it off it. So I don't want to give up on any of our draft picks, obviously. All right, yeah, I know. We need contracts. We have zero. I get it. <laughs> We will sign some people here soon. Yeah, look at that. That's our best player. Literally nobody. <laughs> wow, we literally have zero contracts. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, Sam Reinhart looks to be the top player in this draft. Or not in this draft, in this free agency pool. Uh, Braden Shen, Tyson Berry, Jake Muzzin, Dougie Hamilton, Mike Hoffman. Some pretty good players out there. Sort of by potential. Got uh, Dylan Sakura, Dominic Cahoon, relatively good uh, prospects, I guess, as well. Let's go and take a look at the goaltenders. Is there an elite goaltender? There is. There's three, four, four, really. There's five to six starters out there right now. You could argue Howard. Well, I'd say Howard's a starter, but Grubauer, 85, Laner, 86, Longfist, 87, Crawford, 87, Rene, 88. There's some goalies out there, too, guys. Let's take a look at potential for here. A couple of uh, medium starter goaltenders as well. Columbus let go of Corvusalo. You guys don't have a goalie. Why? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. But uh, you know what, guys? That will be it from me in this episode. Hopefully you did all enjoy. I will see you uh, next season uh, in a few days probably for the 2020-2021 season where we uh, lose, lose, and lose. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one.